Hi everyone, I'm Debbie Roberts, owner and financial advisor at Property Apprentice. Join us today for the Week in Review, where I talk about current events for the everyday investor and home buyer. Our topics for this week, topic number one from One News on the 19th of August, with the OCR coming down, how far will home loan rates fall? Topic number two from interest.co.nz on the 20th of August, house prices continued to tumble in July, but that's proving to be good news for buyers. Topic number three from landlords.co.nz on the 20th of August, from hunted to hunters. And topic number four from the Mortgage Mag on 20th of August, mortgage advisors should put greater emphasis on price, according to Com Commerce Commission. Topic number five from interest.co.nz on the 19th of August, three quarters of the properties selling at auction are fetching less than their rating valuation. So first up this week from One News on the 19th of August, with the OCR coming down, how far will home loan rates fall? The official cash rate, or the OCR, has been reduced, leading banks to lower many of their home loan rates. However, with predictions of further OCR declines in the coming years, the question arises, how low will mortgage rates go, and is it worth waiting for a better deal? The Reserve Bank's latest monetary policy statement projects the OCR will drop to under 4% by the end of next year, and to 3% by mid-2027. Gareth Kiernan, Chief Forecaster at Infometrics, anticipates a 25 basis point cut at each meeting throughout mid-next year, with additional cuts in the latter half of 2025. Using the bank's OCR projections, Infometrics estimates that by early 2025, a one-year home loan rate could be around 5.4%, with two- and three-year fixed rates at 5.5% and 6% respectively. Four- and five-year fixed rates might be 6.1% and 6.3%, while floating rates could reach 6.67%. Kenan added that these estimates come with two caveats. First, the Reserve Bank does not publish other interest rate forecasts, so Infometrics maintained its longer-term wholesale rate forecasts, which predict a 10-year government bond rate of about 4.2% in early 2027, similar to current levels. This could limit the decrease in long-term fixed rates. Second, bank margins on retail mortgage rates appear unusually low, likely due to weak borrowing demand. If these margins return to normal over the next 18 months, banks may pass on fewer of the interest rate cuts to borrowers. If current margins persist, a 3% OCR could lead to a one-year fixed rate of 4.9%, with two- and three-year rates at 5% and four- and five-year rates at 5.1%. Kiwi Bank economist Sabrina Delgado forecasts the OCR to fall further than the Reserve Bank's projections, reaching 2.5% by the middle of 2027. However, she noted that retail interest rates would depend on term deposit rates and other funding costs. Mortgage rates might approach 5%, possibly higher, depending on term deposit rate trends. ASB senior economist Chris Tennant-Brown expects the OCR to be 3.25% by the end of next year, with most fixed-term mortgage rates comfortably below 6%. Wholesale markets are priced in another 75 basis point cuts this year. For refixing a mortgage for six months to be a better deal than a year, the six-month rate would need to drop significantly, which Kiernan suggests is possible with further OCR cuts. My advice would be to talk to your mortgage advisor before you refix your mortgage rate to get some guidance from them based on your specific situation. Topic number two from interest.co.nz on the 20th of August. House prices continued to tumble in July, but that's proving to be good news for buyers. House prices continued their downward trend in July, with the national median price dropping by 2.2% to 753000 which was a decrease from 770000 in June, according to the Real Estate Institute of New Zealand, or REINZ. This decline also represents a 2.2% decrease compared to July of the previous year. Auckland experienced a significantly larger drop, with its median price falling by $80,000, or 7.8%, to $950,000 in July, down from $1.03 million in June. The most substantial decline within Auckland occurred in its central suburbs, including areas like Hearn Bay, Ponsonby, Greylin, and Remuera, 
Wellington and Canterbury also saw declines, with median prices dropping by 28,000 and 36,000 respectively. The Rhine's House Price Index, the HPI, which adjusts for the mix of properties sold each month, showed a 0.3% national decrease in July compared to June and a 1.9% decline over the three months to June. The ongoing price drops reflect lower vendor asking prices, as reported by property websites, realestate.co.nz and Trade Me Property. However, these lower asking prices appear to be benefiting buyers, leading to increased purchasing activity. In July, 5,806 residential properties were sold nationwide, marking a 19.7% increase from June and a 14.5% rise compared to July last year. That's fairly significant. In Auckland, the impact of lower asking prices on sales was even more pronounced, with 1,805 residential sales in July, which is an increase of 21.5% from June and 5.5% from July of the previous year. The increase in sales during July reduced the total stock of residential properties on the market from 31,745 in June to 30,556 in July. However, this is still a 32% increase compared to July last year, suggesting that buyers will continue to have a wide selection of properties and maintain a strong negotiation position for some time yet. At some stage, the increase in the number of buyers in the market, however, will continue to increase, and at some stage, the numbers of available listings will start to decrease because of that. And that is when we're going to start seeing the return of FOMO into the property market, which pushes prices up. Want to learn more about investing in property? Join me at one of our free events called How to Succeed with Property Investing. I'll discuss strategies for successful investing from my perspective as a financial advisor and experienced property investor, available live, online, or in our office in Auckland. Check out propertyapprentice.co.nz for upcoming dates and register today. We don't sell property, so it's all about increasing your knowledge to reduce your risk. If you've already been to one of our free events and would like to find out more about how we can help you to reach your financial goals, you can also book a no-obligation phone call or meeting with my husband, Paul Roberts, via the website. Topic number three from landlords.co.nz on the 20th of August, from hunted to hunters. Property investors are expected to return to the market next year, even with a projected 5-7% to rise in house prices, according to Kiwi Bank, I would suggest that property investors never actually left the market. There's just been fewer of us in the market. Investors who've been heavily targeted by policymakers through measures like interest rate deductibility rules, right line tests and strict LVR, loan-to-value ratio restrictions, are now poised to take advantage of current market conditions. Jared Kerr, Kiwi Bank's chief economist, believes that the tide is turning and that investors will soon shift from being hunted to becoming hunters in a buyer's market. Interest rates will play a crucial role in this shift. With rates starting to fall, Kerr notes that the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, the RBNZ, has begun a series of rate cuts aimed at returning to a neutral stance. He points out that while the housing market has experienced a sharp correction and remains sluggish, Kiwi Bank anticipates a more favourable environment next year as rate cuts accelerate. Kerr explains that the Reserve Bank in New Zealand is moving from highly restrictive interest rate levels towards less restrictive and possibly even stimulatory levels. He emphasises that interest rates are the primary driver of house prices. The recent OCR cut is just the beginning, with Kerr expecting a total of 12 25 basis point cuts amounting to a 300 basis point reduction. To effectively remove the restrictiveness of current interest rates, Kerr suggests that the Reserve Bank will need to achieve a Goldilocks rate, one that's not too high or too low, estimated to be around 2.75, down from the current 5.25%. He believes it may need to go slightly lower, to about 2.5% to stimulate the market. Lower interest rates are expected to significantly influence business decisions and boost household confidence. As rates continue to decrease, investors are likely to be drawn back into the market, especially as rental yields increase and rents rise at the fastest pace in over 30 years, 
even while house prices in some areas remain depressed. Additionally, the government's recent moves to reintroduce interest deductibility, shorten the Bright Line test timeframe, and potentially relax the Triple CFA, that's the Credit Contracts and Consumer Finance Act, are seen as incentives that will further attract investors. While forecasting is inherently uncertain, Kerr predicts a potential 6% increase in house prices next year, driven by factors such as surging migration and the loss of housing in areas vulnerable to climate change, which will exacerbate the ongoing housing shortage. He also notes that government initiatives, including infrastructure spending and incentives for new construction, will play a significant role, with interest rates being a key factor from now on. Topic number four from the Mortgage Mag on the 20th of August. Mortgage advisors should put greater emphasis on price, according to the Commerce Commission. Mortgage advisors need to focus more on price, and lenders should improve and standardise their mortgage application systems, according to the Commerce Commission's final report on banking competition. The report also recommends that advisors be required to submit multiple mortgage applications and that banks discontinue their use of conversion rates for advisors. Commission Chair John Small emphasised that price is a key factor for consumers shopping for home loans. However, the investigation revealed that when using mortgage advisors, often only one loan offer is submitted. I would suggest that there's a really important reason for that, and that is that an experienced mortgage advisor knows which bank is going to be the best situation for your particular application, and they'd make that decision based on that. It's not like they can't be bothered going to any others. It's just, what's the point, right? Small acknowledged that while matching borrowers with lenders is an important role of advisors, there should be a stronger push for price competition, which mortgage advisors do anyway. You know, they do compare interest rates that other banks are offering at all given times, at least the ones that we work with. He also recognized that achieving this goal will require investment from banks. When asked whether submitting multiple applications and stopping the use of conversion rates would increase costs for consumers, Small pointed to the experience in Australia, where the banking industry operates with common data standards and technology platforms, allowing banks to process mortgage applications more efficiently and at a lower cost, which fosters better competition. The Commerce Commission remains concerned that New Zealand's banking market functions as a stable two-tier oligopoly with limited competition. Small noted that major banks have little strategic differentiation and primary focus on maintaining market share and profitability, which has made them more profitable compared to banks in other countries. In a truly competitive market, Small argued, banks would adopt more aggressive strategies to win over customers from their competitors. The report retained its key recommendations from a draft version released in May including urging the government to consider making Kiwi Bank a disruptive competitor. The Commission also suggested that the government should provide Kiwi Bank with access to additional capital, which could enable it to challenge the dominance of the major banks. In the long term, the report highlighted the potential of open banking to drive competition in personal banking services. It called for open banking to be fully operational by June 2026, and encourage the government to adopt open banking solutions for services like tax payments, welfare and vehicle licensing. Additionally, the Commission recommended that the government reduce barriers to switching home loan providers as part of its reforms to the Credit Contracts and Consumer Finance Act. It also advised that existing and future legislation should not unintentionally favour large banks over smaller providers. Topic number five for this week in review from interest.co.nz on the 19th of August. Three quarters of the properties selling at auction are fetching less than their rating valuation. Auction activity remains subdued across the country with interest.co.nz tracking just 222 residential property auctions from August 10th to August 16th, which is down from 267 the previous week. Of these, 81 properties were sold at auction, resulting in a sales rate of 36%, consistent with the previous week. However, the percentage of properties sold for prices at or above their rating valuation fell to 24%, down from 35% the week before. This indicates that approximately 75% of auctioned properties are being sold for less than their rateable valuations. 
This drop in property selling above or at their rating valuations is the second lowest in the past two years, with only one week in June of the previous year recording a lower figure. These trends align with recent data from property sales websites Trade Me Property and realestate.co.nz, which show that vendors are adjusting their asking prices downward to align with the current market conditions. My suggestions are that, you know, it's much better to understand the market value of a property rather than looking at the rateable values because the rateable values are only reviewed once every three or four years, right? So yeah, it doesn't take long before them to become horribly out of date. Are you ready to take your first step into property investment or elevate your current strategy? Join us for the How to Succeed with Property Investing event. You'll gain valuable insights from industry experts and discover proven strategies to achieve success. Whether you're a first-time buyer or an experienced investor looking to enhance your portfolio, this event offers essential tips to help you navigate the property market with confidence. I'll also be sharing valuable insights and expert tips to help you on your journey. Our free events cater to all levels of property investors and first-time buyers. And I'll also tell you more about how we help our clients to achieve their financial goals. So if you're interested in finding out more about what we do, visit propertyapprentice.co.nz today to secure your spot and register for one of our upcoming events. Alternatively, you can book a no-obligation phone call or meeting with my husband, Paul Roberts, through our website at propertyapprentice.co.nz. Thanks for listening.